Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So here's something really awesome. If you want to level up your coding skills, then Unity has released a really excellent ebook all about design patterns, and alongside that they have a really awesome free interactive project. Now I highly recommend that you read through this whole ebook and you download this project and expect it. There's links to everything in the description. This truly contains an insane amount of knowledge, in total 150 pages of lots of stuff, and then a ton of interactive demos over here in this project. So this covers things like the solid principles, so things like single responsibility, open close, and so on. And then it also covers lots of design patterns. So they talk about the singleton pattern, strategy pattern, dirty flag, state, observer, and so on. All with interactive demos on this free project, as well as a ton of detail over here on the free ebook. So I think this is really great. And I absolutely love the interactive project that they built. Here you can actually see in action everything that they talk about in detail in the ebook. You can play some interactive demos and see exactly what makes them work. I really love interactivity in the learning process. That's why I always recommend that you apply everything that you learn. It is only by doing that you actually truly learn. And that's also a big reason why when I made my complete C-sharp course, I made sure to include the project files, which includes frequently asked questions, quizzes, and interactive exercises to help you learn by doing. These require you to actually write some code. For example, the lecture on variables, you need to modify the code to make sure the object reaches the target in time. The course covers everything from beginner to advanced with a total of 177 interactive exercises. There's free video lectures over here on YouTube, but if you want the companion project, check out the premium version. It's linked in the description. So back to design patterns. For the interactive project, you can get it for free on the asset store. Just create a brand new Unity 6 project and import this one. Here, open up the Unity Technologies folder, go inside, level up your code, and here we have the boot scene. So yep, here is the main menu. Let's go inside the solid principles and let's inspect the single responsibility principle. So this one says that a class should have only one reason to change, meaning it should only have one job or responsibility. If you just follow this one very simple rule, your code will be so much better. We can read on the inbox some more detail about this principle. So in theory, you should create smaller classes rather than one monolithic class. So instead of having one player class that handles audio, input movement, handles all of that in just one class, instead of that, you should really refactor your code to use basically a component system. So have one main player class, then have other smaller classes that handle just one thing. So one just for the audio, one just for the input, and one just for movement. Here in the interactive exercise, we can see exactly that. This one contains two player classes. So we have one unrefactored player, and then we can press on T to toggle the prefabs. And if this one spawns the player that has all of these things now separated into different components, in terms of behavior, they both work exactly the same. So this one moves, and this one also moves. But in terms of code maintenance and stability, the other version is much, much better. And of course, we can inspect all the code so we can go inside the hierarchy. And here we do see the player and the unrefactored player. And you can see over here on the inspector, the unrefactored player, this one has just one script. It handles the movement, the controls, the collision, audio effects, and so on. Whereas on the refactored player, on this one, instead of having just one giant class, we have multiple. So there's one that just handles input and nothing else, one that just handles movement, one just for the audio, and so on. So this is an excellent example of the single responsibility principle. How ideally your class should do one thing and one thing only. Another interesting one is the interface segregation. So this one says that clients should not be forced to depend upon interface they do not use. It promotes the creation of specific interfaces over a single general purpose interface. We can read some more detail over here on the ebook. And this one's actually similar to the previous one. So previously, instead of having one giant monolithic class, over here it's kind of the same thing. Don't have giant monolithic interfaces. Don't have interfaces that require tons of things. So they handle health, handle taking damage, movement speed, and all some player stats and so on. So instead of that, split those into multiple smaller interfaces. Here on the demo for this one, for here we have a little turret that we can control, and we've got various effects, and they implement different interfaces. So this one over here implements eye effect trigger and eye damageable. That means it spawns a particle effect and takes some damage. Then on this one also has eye explodable, so it also fires off an explosion when it dies. And then on this one over here, this one just has an effect trigger. Once again, we can inspect the project files for this demo and see how everything works. Here we have an interface eye target that has both take damage, explode, and trigger effect all in just one single interface, meaning for any target that implements this interface, you have to implement these three functions. Whereas the alternative is basically split them into smaller interfaces. So you have one that just handles eye damage, one that just handles eye effect trigger, and one just eye explodable. So the difference being that with the unrefactored target, if you have something that does not explode, doesn't matter, with this interface you always have to implement the explode function. Whereas if you split it onto multiple interfaces, you can just simply not implement this interface and just implement these two. Now for me, I love interface. It is possibly my favorite C-sharp feature. If you don't know about interface, definitely go check my lecture on my C-sharp course. It is a really awesome thing. You definitely must know about interface. Then we also have demo for the open close principle. So this one states that classes should be open for extension, but closed for modification. So in this case, instead of having one class that calculates the area for each of these types of objects, if you do it like this, then you basically need to constantly update this class whenever you add new shapes. Whereas if you use something like a base class, if you do that, then you can create multiple classes, each of them extending that base class. 
And then the area calculator class, this one does not care what shape it receives, it just calls the function and calculates it. So in this second method, you can easily keep adding more shapes and you don't have to refactor the original area calculator. So over here on demo, it shows exactly that. So we can have something that is a square, a circle, triangle, and so on. And all of them work despite not depending on modifying the original calculator class. Then here, the dependency inversion principle. So this one states that high level modules should not depend on low level modules, but should depend on abstractions. So once again, this one takes the benefit of interface. Again, like I said, it's my favorite c -sharp feature. This one is all about making a switch that can work with multiple types of objects. So it can work with either some kind of trapdoor or some kind of simple door. For this specific use case, if you want to see a tutorial just like this, you can go watch my How to Interact with NPCs video. In there, I do exactly this. I make an interaction system that works for interacting with an NPC, pushing a button, opening a door, and so on. Once again, the way the whole thing works is thanks to interfaces. Then back in the main menu, we see a section on design patterns. So as you can see, this includes quite a lot of them. And remember how these interactive demos, they showed them in action, but then you can also read the theory in much more detail over here on the ebook. So as you can see, tons of pages for all design patterns, factory, object, singleton, and so on. For example, let's look at the singleton pattern. This one is probably the most useful one of all. I don't think I've ever made a single game without any singletons. A singleton is quite simple in concept. It's really just the idea that you have a single instance of one type. The pattern also ensures that only one of those types exists and makes it super easy to access. So in this example, we have a bunch of audio managers, but managing audio is really something where you only need one of those things. You probably don't need multiple audio managers. So again, over here on demo, we can click on remove duplicates and we end up with just one single instance, just one audio manager, and everything still works exactly the same, but now we have just one instance of our audio manager. We can inspect the code to see how they implement it. They extend a kind of singleton base class. So this is the class that they made. And again, it stores a single instance of a type and then has a property with a get. And on that one, it tries to get the first object of this type. And if it does not exist, then it creates one. But if it does exist, then it just returns it. So the singleton pattern is quite simple and actually extremely useful. Then for the command pattern, so this one encapsulates an action or request as an object, which allows clients to queue or log requests or actions while supporting undoability. So this is where you define some kind of command, again, possibly with an interface. And then that command can store some kind of logic, and then you can execute that logic whenever you want. So one common example for this pattern is for building an undo system. That's exactly what they implemented over here in this demo. So we can move this little character, it can move it around, go all over the maze. And then by pressing comma or period, we can undo and basically goes backwards or redo and basically goes forwards. Well, again, the code for how it works, they define an interface I command, inside it has an execute and an undo function. And then they simply use a stack of I command in order to store the multiple commands for doing and undoing. Or another interesting one is the dirty flag. So the dirty flag pattern can help you when you have lots of compilations or updates happening in between your scenes. So we can use the dirty flag in order to avoid unnecessary processing. This example showcases some kind of world streaming system. So we have a little character that we can move around. And as we move, we can see that certain sectors are being either loaded or unloaded. In order to prevent the logic from constantly loading or unloading sectors, in order to prevent that, each sector has a dirty tag. And when it is marked as dirty, then it runs that logic. When it isn't, then it just doesn't do anything. So it is very simple in theory, but it is quite useful. The concept of the dirty flag can really be used in so many ways. Anytime you have some kind of complex logic, you can always use this pattern. Just put that complex logic behind a dirty flag and make a much simpler test for setting that dirty flag. That way, most of your code, most of the time, will only run the simple test. And only when dirty flag is set, only then do you do the very complex logic. Then you still have the factory pattern, so this one handles creating objects. Object pulling, so this one helps you initialize objects and reuse them. You have the state pattern, so this is essentially a state machine. You have the observer pattern, this one is essentially all about events. You have model view presenter, model view view model. You have the strategy pattern, flyweight, and a bunch more. Again, all of these have detailed demos over here inside of this demo, and they're also explained in detail over here in this giant ebook. This really has a ton of knowledge, so I highly recommend you go through the ebook and the interactive demo. If you go through and you fully understand all of this, you will definitely gain quite a lot of knowledge. And if you like interactive exercise, then check out my c -sharp course. There are free video lectures over here on YouTube. But if you can afford it, the premium version is really awesome because it has over here the interactive exercise. The Companion Project has frequently asked questions, quizzes, and the exercises. So for every lecture in the course, you can really apply what you're learning in order to make sure you're truly learning. Check it out through the link in the description. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.